It is a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Clemson, South Carolina, as the Tigers and the Boston College Eagles play game two of this opening weekend in the conference. Hi, everybody. Fred Cunningham, along with the former Brave Marty Clary. Well, Clemson won game one yesterday. They came from behind to win four to three. One thing that's been interesting so far, eight out of the uh, positions on the field, the natural positions, seven of them have seen Monty Lee start at least three different players at those spots. When you're young and it's early in the season, you're trying to find that chemistry. What's going to work best as we get into ACC play in a, in a long season? So I think that's what he's trying to do there. And one guy who's been in there for every game so far has been behind the plate. Adam Hackenberg is off to a great start in 2020. Yeah, and he's been out there getting that pitching staff to get good rapport with them, feel confident with them. You can do that early when the weather's cool. He may need a little help when it gets hot. Hackenberg knocked in two runs yesterday, including the game winner in the bottom of the eighth. Meanwhile, Kier Meredith, all he does is get on base. Well, you got to score to win, and if you get on base, you got a better chance. He's reached base in every game so far he's played in. And he is the reigning ACC Player of the Week after having a terrific week last week, hitting better than 600, including an outstanding performance in that series against South Carolina. Let's take a look at the Boston College lineup. These guys can hit a 311 average for the team. They are 11th in the country in that uh, department. Hitters 2, 3, 4, and 5. All hit between 372 and 422. They can put runs on the board. Clemson defensively, the question is, where's Elijah? Elijah Henderson has started all over the place. He started in left. He started in second. He gets the call today in right field. Bo Mikowski will be in center field today for the Tigers. And on the mound for Clemson will be Davis Sharp making his fourth start of the season. The right-hander 1-1 one one so far, a 2.51 ERA, 16 strikeouts in just three walks so far. And leading things off, here's Sal Fralick, the right-hander for Boston College. He'll step in there. And when you've got a good hitting team like that, you want to see that strikeout-to-walk ratio. You, do, can, you cannot afford to put a lot of guys on by base on ball, so... They're going to be looking for him to be sharp in the strike zone. Fralick, sophomore out of Lexington, Massachusetts. He was 0 for 5 and scored a run yesterday in the opening game of the series. The first pitch is in there for a called strike. Monty Lee's looking for five to six quality innings today out of Davis Sharp. Not putting him in the lineup today. He did bat last week, last Saturday in South Carolina. He didn't even take any BP today. He wants him totally focused on pitching. Yeah, you start getting into your conference play, things start changing a little bit on what, how much you want to kind of take somebody's focus off their main thing. Pitch is low and misses. Two and one. Good look at Davis Sharp there, obviously. We know he, he can certainly hit in the field and certainly is an outstanding pitcher for the Tigers. He is their Saturday starter, and that evens it up at two and two. Well, out of four pitches, he's already thrown three different pitches. He's thrown his fastball twice, he's thrown his changeup once, and he's thrown a slider once. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Popped it up out of play. His fastball's right around 88 miles an hour as we get started today. Fralick had an 11-game hitting streak come to an end yesterday in the opening game between these two teams. 2-2 Two -two pitch taken. We got a full count at three and two. That changeup got away from him a little bit. Rode out high and out of the strike zone. Three-two pitch. Taken for a ball. So the leadoff man is aboard and Monty Lee will be talking about this already. That's a 390 as he likes to call him and he wants to win the 390 game or the 390 game every time out. Yeah and that's what mentioned right at the start of the game. Good hitting lineup. You cannot give them extra bases without them having to put the ball in play. You've taken your defense out of the out of helping you. So get back in the zone. Brings up the shortstop, Brian Dempsey, a co-captain for the Eagles. Fouls it back out of play. He's 0-1. 0 for 2 yesterday. Walked once and scored a run. In that game that saw the Tigers fall behind twice. 
as Boston College scored in the first and the third, but it was Hackenberg delivering in the sixth and the eighth, and Clemson won that game 4-3. to three. Runner is going, fouled out of play to the right side, and so he'll come back, and it's now an 0-2 count. Not sure that was a hit and run or not, but he waited on that pitch and looked, looked like he was trying to push that to the right side either way. Freilich is a runner. He's six for six so far in stolen bases so far in this season. O2 pitch, runner going again, and Hackenberg cannot handle it, so the stolen base, he came in the head first slide, but it wasn't necessary as the ball got by, and now it's a runner in scoring position. Looked like a little fastball, but it looked like he cut it just a little bit as he was moving toward the outside, and that was enough to as he took his eye off to make the throw, it just got by him. So it's now a one-two count, but you can see Freilich is in scoring position for Boston College. Dempsey watches it go outside, two and two. He's a 429 hitter on the season with runners in scoring position. And Boston College has a great opportunity here to get on the board early. Pitching him away hard now, two or three pitches. Good time to come inside, try and jam him, keep the runner where he is, and let him hit a ground ball on the left side of the infield. You just got to make sure you get it down and not belt high where they can loop it over the infield into the outfield. Two two pitch. Sharp to Dempsey. Watches it in the dirt, it's now three and two. Dempsey, pl Dempsey playing in his 122nd consecutive game for the Eagles. So I was thinking inside, he was thinking I want to hit with this good breaking ball, but he missed. Finds himself behind now, full count. There is a fly ball that's going to go to Mikowski. He tracks it down. The runner cannot advance, and there's one away. Now, that time they set up inside, but that ball was left out over the plate, not really where he wanted it, and he had pretty good contact. Fortunately, that's what you got other players out there for, hit right at your center fielder and makes a good throw in, keeping him at second. So one down that brings up Cody Morissette, and he loves to see Clemson pitching. Of course, he hits everybody, as his uh, coach was talking to us before the ball game today. Mike Gambino saying he just hits. Sophomore stepping up to the plate. First pitch from Sharp. In the dirt for a ball. Morris set hitting 400 on the season. Two homers and 10 RBI. Starts him off with a changeup, and already you can almost feel that he's concerned about this hitter. Morissette will step out. He was one for three in the game yesterday. Knocked in a run for BC. Also walked. The 1-0. Fly ball. Mikowski calling for it in center field. Brings it in. The runner will try to advance and he will come in for the head first slide. So you can see that uh, Freilich gets the third, but there's now two away. Pitch down the middle. He had a good swing at it. Got it just off the tip of the bat there. Lines up under it, makes a good throw in. Not in time to stop him from going to third, though. So with two down, the left fielder, Joe Swazi, the senior, will be up. You can see his numbers on the season, batting 422. A homer and 13 RBI. He's got to deliver here, though, with two out. Pitches outside. Swazi is the other co-captain, senior out of Glen Cove, New York. Bowed it down to play. That'll even it up one and one. 
Good location on that fastball in the outer third. Swazi had a hit and knocked in a run yesterday in the series opener. 1-1 one, one pitch. Misses outside. 2-1. and one. You can see that ball was well off the plate. Swing and a miss. It's 2-2. Two and two. First breaking ball that he's thrown for a strike. It was actually a little up and had him way out in front, thinking maybe it was a fastball in his eyes. Two balls, two strikes. Lays off it. Another full count. Swazi waits for the 3-2. Pops it out of play. He'll hang in there. That's Sharp's best slider so far. That was right where you want to throw it. It just shows you what kind of hitters Boston College has. He was able to fight that off, even though it was a good outside slider. Swazi had a 14-game hitting streak that dated back to last season that ended on Monday. The pitch. Bounded back to stay alive. You're seeing Sharp stay a lot on the outside corner, and, that, and that's you know good to stay out of the power zone, but you've got to come in some. You've got to get them from reaching out over the plate with every pitch. Fly ball, center field. Mikowski calls for it. And he took all three outs. BC gets the leadoff man aboard, but he doesn't come across. We go to the bottom of the first. The Tigers come up for the first time. Tigers up for the first time on this Saturday afternoon. 241, their average as a team. Dylan Brewer will be leading things off today. Those top three hitters for Clemson are a combined 8 of 11 in the stolen base department. Boston College, the defense, you would know this look if you follow the Eagles. Seven of their eight infields have, infielders have started all 12 games, and Cody Morris said he is outstanding at third base. The pitcher is Joe Mancini. He makes his fourth start of the season. He's 1-1 one one with a 5.79 ERA, 12 strikeouts, and 11 walks so far in the season for him. Talked to Mike Gambino before the game, and he says he's got a good fastball that he says is better than what the uh, the gun will show. Yeah, and if you walk 11 guys, you're, you're going to have some run score that probably shouldn't score normally. So he's got to be in the, in the strike zone early and often against this uh, Tiger lineup, or he again is going to find some trouble in the ERA department. So Dylan Brewer will lead things off for the Tigers, the freshman from Latta, South Carolina. He'll take the first pitch for a ball. Brewer was one for two in the game yesterday, scored a run. Comes in batting 206 on the season. Called strike there, evens it up. And he's 88, 89, so good fastball. Doesn't have to be 95 to get hitters out, especially if you can put it on the outside corner and low like that pitch. Watches that one misses in the inside and low. Two and one. The pitch from Mancini. Misses on the outside. It's now three and one. So both pitchers behind the first hitter of their particular inning. And he misses, and he walks on five pitches, and the Tigers get their leadoff man. So both probably feeling a little bit of nerves, knowing how the importance of these games, wanting to start well in conference, all these different types of things going through your mind. Sometimes you want to overthrow, and you... You lose a little bit of your uh, technique. Just want to catch a breath, calm down, try and get ahead with that first pitch. Elijah Henderson 
the right fielder steps in. As you can see, the quick throw over to Jack Cunningham at first base. Brewer is three for three in the stolen to base department on the season. Anderson takes it. Ball one. First slider for Manzini did not get a good rotation on that. You see how it just kind of spun up high. Henderson was 0 for 4 in the game yesterday. Takes it inside, 2 and 0. Of course, we were here two Saturdays ago and watched him hit that walk-off RBI single in the 10th to beat Stony Brook. Two-o delivery from Mancini, inside three and zero. I've noticed both pitchers struggling with their breaking ball and with a little control. Sometimes that wind straight at your back um, does not give the bite on the break ball. It's spinning, and if there's a little wind cutting into it, it actually pushes it in the direction you need. Right down the middle for a called strike, three and one. As you see today, it's blowing straight in. Not really helping pitchers much with the uh, breaking ball. 3-1 pitch, taken inside, and the first two Tigers are both aboard by walks. So the Tigers get their first runner in scoring position on the afternoon. And in will step in Kier Meredith. He was one for four in the ball game yesterday. As I mentioned, he's the reigning ACC player of the week. Hit 6-11 a week ago, and this is what his numbers are so far this season with runners in scoring position, hitting 600, and that's the situation he walks up into with nobody out here in the first. Runners at first and second. And with his other stat of reaching base in every game. A lot of positive things for the Tigers at this point. Ground ball to the right side. It'll be fielded by Gold, who makes the throw to Cunningham. There's one down. Actually, they went for the runner at second. They're going to call him out there. So they're able to get one out here at least. Brewer, who was at third, will make it. They're going to call an interference, apparently. Monty Lee coming out for his explanation now. That would be a terrible call because he was almost at first base already. There was no throw that was going to be made. Let's give you a wide look at this. Makes the throw to second. And I don't, I don't know what, you, what you're calling there. And he just ran to the base. He's not running out of the way. He's just trying to get to the base. And all he tried to tag, he didn't, he didn't even have the ball. Yeah. I think you could argue that one, that he didn't even complete the tag. And now we're going to have our first video review of this one. So you'll be able to watch the replay along with the umpires as well as they're going to head inside. I'd like to see that more closely. I'm not sure he even held on to the ball. But he definitely was not attempting to throw to first, and there's no reason why you would have a double play call on that. So right in there, and you just see ball's out, not even in his glove when he yeah. brings it up. This is a good view of what he does. Watch the mitt. I think I'd give him that tag. It hit his own leg. Yeah. I'd give him that, but I would not give him the one at first. There's no reason for him to – he didn't go out of the base path. He wasn't attempting to make a throw. He just uh, he wasn't even going to touch the base. He ended up having it on the leg. This is going to be an interesting call. Yeah, I think he was lifting it up yeah. when, he, when he got it. I think, think you could give him that, but I think you could also 
say he didn't even get that completed. I, I'm not really even sure he did. Right. I, th I think you could definitely say either way on that. You give the umpire the benefit of the doubt, whatever he calls there. But I think you're going to have to. All right. The umpires are coming out now. That is it. That is it. They are calling a double play. I just, I just think that's a terrible call. I, I do not understand. If you're not attempting to make a throw, you should not get interference as if you're trying to make a double play. He wasn't even attempting it. So suddenly, there's now two down. Still a runner in scoring position. That is Brewer at second. And Briar Hawkins, the third baseman, comes up. Hawkins, one for four yesterday, scored a run. Sophomore out of Cumming, Georgia. There's a drive, left field. It will be gone. Home run for Briar Hawkins. And just like that, the Tigers put two on the board. Wow, that's a good piece of hitting right there. And goodness, had that play not occurred right before, he'd be looking at a big inning. Just like that, Hawkins hits his first home run of the season. And it's 2-0. Belt high pitch, and he just drives it right down the line. Just enough to get over the fencing there. That will help you if you're a Clemson fan get over the double play call you had there. You looked like you're on your way to a huge inning. As it is right now, two are on the board. As the first pitch to James Parker comes in, called for a strike, it's 0-1. Fly ball, center field. Baldelli is back for it and brings it in, and that will be the inning. But a Briar Hawkins two-run homer gives the Tigers the lead as we head to the second. So with that two-run home run for the Tigers in the bottom half of the first inning, that means Clemson has scored a run in at least or at least one run in 118 consecutive games. That is the third longest streak in the country. So Jack Cunningham will lead things off for BC here in the top of the second. Both pitchers struggled getting guys in scoring position first innings. Clemson managed to get out of it. Boston looked like they were getting out of it, and then the big home run. That big shot by Briar Hawkins, and the Tigers have that 2 nothing lead. Big cut and a miss. It's 1-1. One and one. Cunningham, 1-4, one 1-4 four. for four yesterday. 4-13 is his average on the season. Pitch misses inside, it's two and one. That's exactly where you want to be, though. I mean, pound that ball inside, running in on him. If he gets a good swing at it, he's just going to pull it foul. He's evens it up at two and two. Coming in with a home run and nine RBI on the season. He had nine home runs last year for BC. Pitch misses, another full count here at three and two for Davis Sharp. Breaking ball, but you can see that the spin never bo uh, was biting and it just stayed outside. There's a ground ball, it'll be fielded. It'll have to hurry, the throw is Hawkins, but he gets it there in time and there's one down. There's that inside pitch again. An equalizer as they get their hands extended. If you come in in the right location, they just can't get the bat around and it's just catches them in the handle part of the bat. And easy ground ball. Not quite the cliche that when you make a play at the end of an inning on defense and you come up and do something at the plate. This time he did something at the plate and made a nice play on defense in the next inning. Yeah. Fly ball. A little bit of trouble, but pulling it in is Dylan Brewer and Luke Gold. 
took a swing at the first pitch, and now there's two away. You know, initially you think, well, that's just an easy fly. He's under it, but that wind is pushing him away, and you see him having to readjust quickly to get closer to the line to make that play. Nice job for Dylan Brewer. And with two down, it brings up Ramon Jimenez, the designated hitter. Jimenez on the season, batting 250. As Davis Sharp already at 30 pitches with two out here in the second. They'll watch his workload, obviously, because he's also an everyday player in the field, but he's not pitching. And this inning's been much better compared to the first. If he just stays on that kind of trajectory, he'll be fine. Sharp gate of a leadoff walk. He's retired five straight since then. Swing and a miss. He's retired six straight since then. Nothing across for Boston College. A 1-2-3 inning for Davis Sharp. We go to the bottom of the second. It's 2-0 Clemson. It is a doubleheader for us at Clemson today. Tigers leading 2-0 over Boston College in the second. We've got one control room working on this game. The other control room is working on softball right now, and the Tigers are playing Pitt. And after trailing 2-0, Clemson has come back to take a 7-2 lead in that game. So we got a great crowd at both facilities today. Long drive, left field, looking up, and it is gone. It is a one pitch and a one run on the board for the Tigers. A home run for Chad Ferry. That's his first hit of the season, and it's a home run. That had some power and had some height, and the wind is blowing in and slightly across, and, and a little bit of help with that as he swung here. You see the high pitch, and boom. He gets all of it, and that win just keeps pushing it, pushing it. Chad Ferry was 0 for 15 to start the season. He's now 1 for 16, and it's a big one, a home run, and then Clemson leads at 3 0. So that's the second home run ball delivered by Joe Mancini. And now here comes Adam Hackenberg. He sends a ball into left field for a base hit. Hackenberg aboard. Hit that line drive beyond the reach of Brian Dempsey. First curveball down and in, and uh, really was not that bad a pitch, but man, hitting is, is contagious like a lot of things. And, and once a couple guys start hitting it well, you just start focusing better and seeing it better, and that was a good hit by Hackenberg. Bo Mikowski hitting number eight in the order today, the center fielder. Mancini's pitch is taken for a strike. Mikowski just one for 20 on the season so far. 89 mile an hour is down and in on the knees. Takes a called strike. He's quickly down 0-2. Mikowski was 0 for 3 yesterday. A little change up right there. The 0-2. Fly ball, left side. Chase Napper is gonna drop for a base hit. They will send the runner home. Here comes the throw and the relay, and the slide is in. The runner is safe, and just like that, it's 4-0, and Bo Mikowski comes through with his second hit of the season. It brings in a run. Well, Manzini had two perfect pitches to get 0-2, but his 0-2 pitch was dead middle of the plate, belt high, and fought off right down the line for a double. They were sending him all the way. 
Hackenberg, that head first slide. And it's now a four nothing lead for Clemson. Three straight hits in the inning. And as you can see, the Tigers right now with four hits on the afternoon, and they are a perfect 7-0 when they out hit their opponents. Sam Hall, the number nine hitter, comes up. He's got a runner in scoring position. And there's still nobody out here in the second. Hall struggling a little bit in the plate so far this season, only hitting 129. Showed bunt, and that pitch was up and in for a ball. It's 1-0. Yeah, and I think you're seeing Mancini, good arms, got good, some good pitches, but his struggle has been throwing strikes. You know, 12 walks, 11, I mean, 12 strikeouts, 11 walks so far coming into this game, and he's just not, not been consistent in the strike zone. Even when he got ahead, he came back and left the ball middle of the plate, and they're just probably chewing him a little bit. Listen, we got to get some strikes. we got to get down in the strike zone. When he does that, he'll be successful. And it looks like we're starting to have some activity in the Eagles' bullpen as that meeting at the mound breaks up. Clemson leading at 4 nothing. Two runs in the first, two in the second. Hall stepping in. The 1-0 pitch from Mancini. Missed it, it's one and one. Hall in the season is four for 31. Two of his hits are a home run and an RBI triple. So when he's been able to make contact, he's done some good things, but so far struggling compared to where he was a year ago. Sets up to bunt, pops it up, and it goes right to Mancini, who turned around and looked at second, but he was not going to get Mikowski there. It's the first out of the inning. Yeah, fastball up. He just he just did not get on top of it. Jabbed at it just a little bit, and just just too easy a play there. You got to get it on the ground. So that brings up the top of the order. Dylan Brewer, who walked on five pitches the first time up. Takes a swing at it for a strike. It's 0 1. The 0 1. Takes it. That'll even things up. You can see when he's in the right place, he could be really tough. That changeup right before that pitch, and then that one probably got, probably should have caught that call, probably. But when you've been all over the place, a lot of times the umpire's just not ready to give it to you. Ground ball to the right side. Gold will send it over to Cunningham for the second out of the inning as Mikowski makes his way to third. And you can see probably why they were thinking with Hall, if we get him to third base with Brewer up, they either have to pull it in and that, that hit might get over them or if they score if they stay back. So Mikowski is at third and here's Elijah Henderson. He walked the first time up. Takes that pitch for a ball. Elijah's had some good numbers in this position. 364 hitter with runners in scoring position and 333 with two out. And that's the situation he's in right now. Mikowski at third. Anderson takes ball two. Man, 
didn't see any getting loose. That one was right around 92 miles an hour. Two zero pitch, missed it. Two and one. So you see, he's got the stuff. Ninety-one mile an hour there. Boy, if he gets that in over the plate, he, he could be tough. Here comes the two one. Fouled it off. Off the catcher's mask and helmet, evens things up at two and two. Good look at Peter Burns, the catcher for Boston College. Two two delivery. Ground ball to short. Could be the end of the inning. The throw is there in time by Dempsey. The Tigers put two more on the board with three hits. We go to the third. 4-0 Clemson. 4-0 Clemson as we start the top of the third inning. If you're taking a close look at the Boston College uniform, you'll see a strikeout ALS patch is on the side of their hat this year. The Eagles are honoring their former captain, Pete Freights, as well with a PF3 patch on each jersey. Freights was diagnosed with ALS in 2012. He was a huge fundraiser. He was an advocate for a cure by spreading awareness. He also, of course, that included the Ice Bucket Challenge. He passed away just last December 9th. So Boston College honoring their former captain with that throughout the 2020 season. So the top of the third is where we are, and Peter Burns, the catcher, will lead things off. His team in a hole right now after the Tigers put two up on the board in the first and two more in the second. Burns showing bunt right there. Takes the ball, 1-0. and He was 0 for 3 yesterday in the opener. Struck out all three times in the game. Fly ball right field and that is going to be into the seats for a home run peter burns comes back in a hurry he knocks the home run in and it's now a 4-1 game that's his second homer of the season and it's the third home run of the afternoon for the two teams combined taking advantage of a belt high fastball might have been, a, might even have been a little slider that just didn't break. But you see a bell tie, and he just, he's right on it. And immediately laying down a bunt as we went quickly back to action is Dante Baldelli. And Baldelli beats it out to get on base, and so it's now back to back hits. One for one, of obviously a home run. But now BC's got a couple of hits on the board. Sharp jumps off quickly, but you'll see his plant foot gives just a little bit, and there's just no way he's going to get anything on that throw, so he wisely just holds it. That brings up the top of the Boston College order. Sal Fralick, the right fielder, takes the first pitch for a ball. Fralick walked and stole a base in the first, but was stranded. Made it all the way to third, but Sharp got out of the inning. He had retired six straight before giving up the home run and then the bunt single. Foul evens it up at one and one. This is a time where Sharp has to really, really bear down and try and minimize the effects of this inning. Being up four to one, you can't just let a big inning go. You've got to battle each hitter to try and get an out each time. Sharps 1-1 one, one pitch. Missed it. It's 1-2. and two. Back to back changeups. The equalizer says momentum tries to build off to Boston College side and they're gearing up and you just pull them off balance with back to back changeups. 
A ball and two strikes. Throw back over to first as they keep an eye on Baldelli. He's two for three in the stolen base department this year. Fouled it off to the right side. Three home runs in this game. I'm not sure I would have guessed that right away. Looking at the wind, it's officially blown about five miles an hour here in Clemson, although we're so close to Lake Hartwell. It looks like it's got a little bit more behind it than that, but blowing in, it looks like, from the right field side. Mm -hmm. There's a fly ball, and it's going to be trouble. It was trouble until Chad Ferry came in. Nicely done as he hustled in from left field to bring it down for the first out of the inning. Inside out swing. Did not have a lot of pop to it, but just enough to carry it to the outfield. Ferry made a nice little cut there right at the end to bring it in. So with one down and one aboard, Brian Dempsey, the shortstop, flew out to Mikowski in the first. As Sharp makes the thrower to first to Dylan Brewer. Pitch misses on the outside. David Sharp obviously not happy with that effort. And it's 1-0. Oh. Dempsey knows the upstate of South Carolina fairly well. His younger brother John plays at Wofford about an hour from here in Spartanburg. Yeah, sharp slider is consistently, you know, six inches to a foot outside. He has got to re-aim his starting point more at the elbow of the right-handed hitter and let that break to the outside part of the plate. Right now he started about middle of the plate and it's in and six inches a foot off. This is there, so it's 2-0. and oh. Dempsey, a senior from Potomac, Maryland. Clemson leading this game 4-1. We are in the top of the third. Pitch right down the middle for a called strike. That'll make it 2-1. Hitter thought it was low. Might have been. Nice look at Dylan Davis Sharp. Right down the middle again. Evens up 2-2. Two and two. That is the spot he needs to be hitting. That ball that runs just in just a little bit on a right-handed hitter. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout of the afternoon for Davis Sharp, and there are two away. Because when you can hit inside, then you can come back with that slider, and it's hard to... Stay on top of that without pulling out a little bit with your front shoulder. So with two down, that brings up Cody Morissette, the third baseman who flew out to center field back in the first inning. Takes a pitch for a strike. We'll mention Morissette likes to see Clemson pitching Knocked in a run yesterday. Last year in the ACC tournament against Clemson, he hit two home runs in an Eagles victory over the Tigers. One ball, one strike to Morissette. There's a ground ball. It's going to get by. A nice effort by Brewer to knock it down, but he couldn't make the play. The infield hit puts runners now at first and second with two out. He had a slight shift on 
Nice knockdown, and he actually had the play. If he could have just come up with it, but fumbled it right there out of the glove. Couldn't bring it out, so that'll bring up Joe Swazi, the left fielder, who hit a fly ball out to center field to end the first. Boston College has won across here in the third on a Peter Burns home run. They now have runners at first and second. Sharp misses his first pitch. Swazi hitting 368 on the season with runners in scoring position. 413 is average overall. Sharp misses again. It's 2 0. Oh. Both pitchers really struggling with their command today. Neither one of them consistently hitting with any pitch. Davis Sharp is now up to 50 pitches. Actually, 51 in the game. Takes a cut and misses. It's 2 and 1. As you can see, Swazi steps out. Boston College trying to get more here to get back in this game. They've got one across after falling behind 4-0. Three and one. Three balls and a strike is the count to Joe Swazi. Here's the pitch. Fly ball. Chasing after it is Mikowski. He is at the warning track and brings it in. And the Tigers get out of the inning, only giving up one hit. When we come back, we talk to Mike Gambino, the head coach of Boston College. His team trails by three. Fred Cunningham, Marty Clary with you. We are joined by the head coach of Boston College, Mike Gambino. Coach, thanks for taking a moment with us. I know you wanted more out of that last inning, but I'm sure you were happy to see Peter Burns really get going. I know he's been struggling. What's up, boys? Thanks for having, us, having me here. Um, and, yeah, you would have liked to get a little bit more out of that. Swaz put a good swing on it. Uh, and Burnsy, uh, that, was, that was fun to watch, right? He's, we think he's going to be a, a good offensive player for us, and he's just pressing a little bit right now. Coach, I'm looking at Mancini. I see a real live fastball and, and multiple <coughs> pitches, but a little inconsistency. Yeah, he's got to settle in a little bit. His stuff's good. Um, he's getting behind, and this Clemson lineup is pretty scary. You see that, right? So... Um, he's just got to get ahead. When he's 0-1-1-2, he's really good. All right, Mike Gambino, I appreciate you spending a few minute moments with us. Good luck the rest of the day. Thanks, guys. All right. Tenth season for the coach, who is a 1999 Boston College graduate. Came back to coach the alma mater. His team trailing right now 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the third inning. Here's Kier Meredith leading things off for the Tigers. And he'll take that first pitch. Meredith hit into that odd double play that the umpires reviewed and confirmed after the Tigers got their first two aboard to start the ball game. Briar Hawkins, James Parker coming up during this half inning. Come on. Meredith having a discussion right now with our home plate umpire, Greg Street. Two balls and a strike is the count. The 
the pitch from Mancini. Takes it. That'll make it now three and one. Well, you just battled back to get a run. The last thing you want to do is give a free pass here. So if you're Kier, you're looking for something down the middle. Round ball right to Cunningham at first. He'll handle it himself. There's one down. Briar Hawkins, the last time he was up, he went for distance. One much doubt about that one. Got into the first row for Briar Hawkins. His first home run of the season. It was a two run shot. That was in the first. Tigers added two more in the second and have a 4-1 lead here in the bottom of the third. Takes that pitch, 1-0. And had that double play call through the umpire not been called that direction, you very easily could have had a grand slam. Yeah, So Absolutely. that's what, how one call, one little play can change an inning completely. 1-0 pitch. Takes it for a called strike. Hawkins, a sophomore from Cumming, Georgia. Fly ball, center field. Baldelli is there. Two away. And I'll bring up. Brings up James Parker as you take a look at, uh, that's actually Chad Ferry, his home run a little bit earlier. That was the leadoff in the second inning on the first pitch of the second inning. There's a fly ball to the right side, chasing after it hard as Freilich in foul territory, but it will go off toward the Clemson bullpen. Parker flew out to center field to end the first inning, the first time up. Good look at James, the sophomore out of Anderson. His dad, Tim, pitched here in the late 1980s. Another foul ball off on the right side. Hey, you're good. You're good. Flush the ball. Let's go. Clemson four runs on four hits, no errors. Boston College a run on three hits, no errors so far. As to compare to yesterday, kind of a sloppy game, a 4-3 game, but there were seven errors between, eight, actually eight errors between the two teams. I was talking to... Uh, Coach Gambino before the game, we were talking about a 4-3 game. Both pitchers were good, but a 4-3 game with eight errors. If it's a clean game, that might be another one of those one nothing specials we've seen. Absolutely. Round ball will be handled by Morissette, and it is a 1-2-3 inning for Boston College. We will talk to Clemson coach Monty Lee when we come back. Fred Cunningham and Marty Clary joined by Clemson head coach Monty Lee. Coach, I know you like seeing four runs on the board right now. How about Chad Ferry? Finally got that first hit of the season. He made it count. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, you know, he uh, jumped on a first pitch fastball, and uh, ball seems like it's carrying a little bit to left field today. A uh, good day to hit, and uh, wind up getting it out front and hitting out of the ballpark. Coach, help us in the booth and some of the fans for yeah. that are for Clemson fans yeah, on that double play call yeah he's got a slide right there it was interference because he did not slide into second base i think elijah and i you know hadn't had a chance to talk to him uh but i think he i think he probably assumed that he was going to go to first base because the ball took the second baseman to the left so he didn't slide and uh you have to slide it's so, an automatic yeah, it's even automatic. if they don't even that's try right. and make the play yeah that's I right i got you so uh, so that's what happened all right we thanks for clearing yep. up that confusion we appreciate it coach thanks and good luck the rest of the day all right thank you all right monty lee with talking about now we got the whole thing cleared up so you'll remember that was back in the first with the tigers walked the first two runners looked like they were in great shape then had that unusual double play they still got a couple of runs out of the inning thanks to the briar hawkins home run 
Well, that helps me. I, I was, you know, I thought you had to make a play on that to, to get the benefit of that, but that's a rule, and the umpires did a really good job, and I have to apologize to them on that. They went back and reviewed it, and the call they came away with as Jack Cunningham will lead things off here. He grounded to third to start things off back in the second inning. A ball and a strike. Top of the fourth inning at Clemson. Tigers up on Boston College, four to one. So took another look at that strike that has him down one, two. Took that one. Fans wanted a called strike three. Instead, it's two and two. Called strike. Strikeout number three for Davis Sharp. Change up a little bit up, or slider disc never came back. So I see the spin there. It was spinning, but it didn't bite. But he gets the call, he and got the call. one down. Brings up Luke Gold, who flew out to the first baseman on his first swing. Back in the second, takes this called strike. Gold batting 234 on the year. Ground ball, and it's going to actually get by Briar Hawkins. It looked like Hawkins stumbled a little bit, but it's going to be a base hit, and Gold is aboard. Pretty well hit ball. Keep your eye out there on Briar Hawkins. Eh, just tried to make a stab at it, not really just well placed. Fourth hit now for BC, both teams with four. Ramon Jimenez. It's a fly ball out of the play to the right side. Jimenez struck out swinging to end the second. The 0 1 takes it. 0 and 2. Correction 1 and 1. There's your strike. Now it's 1 and 2. Look at Davis Sharp. His pitch count has reached the mid 60s here in the top of the fourth inning. Jimenez lays off that one. It's two and two. The pitch popped it up. Mikowski gives chase after it's going to go off the wall. They will send the runner home. This is gold coming to the plate. Here's the throw. It will not be there in time, and it's an RBI double for Jimenez, and it's now a 4-2 game. Another look at it. Ball really seems to be carrying when it's really off to is. each side of the, the center field, and that wind is coming directly in. It holds it up a little bit, but each side, it's pushing it. There was no hesitation at all. That brings up now Peter Burns, and the last time he was up, he delivered that solo shot to lead off the third for the first Boston College run. Now he's up with a runner in scoring position, takes that. 
Here is that home run the last time that Burns was at the plate. Remember, he struck out all three times at the plate yesterday. But he sent that one in the neighborhood of the Cajun Cafe, and that made it a 4-1 game, and BC just added a run to make it 4-2. Only one out here in the fourth. There's a drive that's going to be, that's going to get past Elijah Henderson and right. This is trouble. Jimenez will score. As you can see, Burns is on his way to third, and he will come in. And just like that, it's a one-run game. It's four to three. It was going to be a tough one for Henderson to try to handle. Let's try to pick it up. Try to make a diving stab at it, and then it goes beyond him, up the hill. And Jimenez finds him all, self, all the way at third. And now it's a one-run game, and we got a meeting at the mound for the Tigers. Four to three is our score. With Burns now with a home run and a triple. We mentioned that Boston College can hit. Of course, they're the classic Northern team. They have yet to play their home opener. That's not going to be coming until the 18th of this month when they play Siena. I'm kind of talking to Mike Gambino before the game. He was talking about how that actually kind of benefits them once you get to ACC tournament time. You might be somewhere for a week, and there's a lot of teams that are kind of antsy for being away from home for so long. It's like these guys have played literally five weeks on the road. I mean, and they're very used to that. Dante Baldelli will come up. Pitch gets away from Hackenberg, and we are tied at four. And this is the kind of, kind of day it's been for the pitchers. They hit a couple good pitches, and then they bounce one or they get out of the strike zone, six inches to a foot. And uh, when you're facing good hitters, that's a recipe for, for problems, and we're seeing that a little bit today. Yeah, that's going to be a wild pitch. And we're tied at four, so Boston College has climbed all the way back up for that early deficit. Baldelli is now up with the bases empty. There's a slider for strike, but even that's too high. It's too good. Clemson scored two in the first, two in the second. Boston College, a run in the third. They've got three on the board so far in this inning. As Baldelli goes down swinging, second strike out of the inning for Sharp, and there's two down. And that's the perfect one down and away. And you can see the hitter's response to that is so much different than when they're sitting back on their back leg when it's up and middle of the plate. So that brings up Sal Fralick, the leadoff hitter. He's one for two on the day with a walk and he lined out to left field. Sharps pitch, ground ball. Could be fielded and thrown over to first. Nicely done by the combination of Brewer and Sharp. But Boston College puts three on the board, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's a 4-4 tie at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Bottom of the fourth inning, Clemson four, Boston College four. Another great crowd here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. We say that all the time because the Tigers, so far in the season, averaging 4,300 fans plus a game. That ranks in the top ten in the country, and they've been benefited by seeing them post a 9-2 and two mark here at home. First pitch is to Chad Ferry taking low. First time Ferry was up in the game. He had his first hit of the season, a solo home run. The 1-0 takes it for a strike. You know, the interesting thing about Clemson so far to see that good attendance, and it's going to be certainly picking up once the weather gets a little bit warmer and 
those weekday games starting this week as the pitch is high. They've been playing four o'clock starts midweek. Those will move to six o'clock starting with the Presbyterian game on Tuesday night. So fans will have a better chance to get here after work in time to see those. You should see the numbers go up. Make Ferry two for two on the afternoon. He's now got two hits on the season, a home run and that single. Yeah, and he's feasting off of getting ahead of the, the pitcher out there, two and one, and he just looking for a dead red fastball. He gets it, drives it into left center. Adam Hackenberg comes up. He's singled the first time up. Later scored a run. Five hits now for the Tigers on the afternoon. Hackenberg hitting 306. And he gets hit in the shoulder, and just like that, there's two aboard. You're seeing Jekyll and Hyde out of our <laughs> pitchers today, right? Man, they look unbelievable when they get ahead, and when they go south, it goes south quickly. Took that in just that left shoulder blade, so. So Bo Mikowski had an RBI double in the second, his first time up. Clemson with a chance now for a big inning with the first two aboard, and there's nobody out. And I don't think he got hurt, but you have to be concerned with Hackenberg if he gets hurt. Yeah. Um, I don't know that their depth is very good at this moment in the catching spot. You can see that Mikowski... Showed bunt, takes the strike. I know Jonathan French is a highly touted freshman catcher from Lilburn, Georgia, but he's had a leg injury. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to be available for a while. The last we heard from Monty Lee, he was going to be reevaluated right about this time, right about the middle of March. That was just to be reevaluated for that leg. So, yeah, they need to keep Hackenberg healthy. Mikowski again showing the bunt there. Takes it for a ball. That makes it one and one. You know, depth tends to come into play in all sports, but, boy, in baseball, you lose key guys. It, it's hard to have enough depth to overcome some of that. Mikowski takes the strike, one and two. Really good breaking ball. Really good breaking ball there. You say Jekyll and Hyde. It hasn't been inning to inning. It's almost been pitch to pitch exactly. at times. Exactly. Pitches in the dirt, but nicely done by Burns to keep the ball in front of them with those runners on base. That makes it two and two. Ferries at first, Hackenberg, or Ferries at second, Hackenberg's at first. 2-2 two -two pitch to Mikowski is, we'll wait for a moment as Mancini stepped back. He's over 50 pitches now on the afternoon. Misses high and outside. It's a full count. Sam Hall is on deck. Had to climb the ladder there just to keep it from going to the backstop. Burns has done his job on the last couple of pitches. 3-2 pitch. Fouled out of play. Don't you know that drives your pitching coach and coach crazy when you see just what can happen when you're throwing good in the strike zone and how crazy it gets when you're not. Three-two pitch from Mancini. There's a drive, but it's going to go right at the shortstop. They'll make one, the turn. Double play made, so a nice job by the Eagles defense. Ferry gets the third, but there's now two down. So the other side of the corn, coin, when you miss your bunt attempt, is you can go to hitting, and he hit a bullet, but right at somebody and able to turn two. The old 
Six four three double play, and there is now two down. That brings up Sam Hall. Tried to bunt the first time up back in the second and popped it right back to Mancini, who made the easy catch. Hall struggling on the season, just batting 125. Of course, he was the Tigers' leadoff hitter for most of last year. Led the ACC in stolen bases, the first Tiger to do that in 25 years. Popped it up. Gold is backing up and calling for it, and he will make the play. He dropped it, and a run is across, and Sam Hall is at second. That should have been the end of the inning. Instead, the Tigers are up 5-4. That's the one location where the wind has been playing a little bit of attention to it and pushes the ball back. And so that ball's up. It's spinning backwards already like a golf and so he's backing up, and all of a sudden the wind's pushing it, and look, he's short. I mean, you can, you can see, you can, great shot just, right there. It's, I got it, I got it. And it just pushes it six inches right out of his glove reach, and uh, bonus for the Tigers there. So Sam Hall now at second following that error, and it's the top of the order with Dylan Brewer. What a huge turnaround that is. That's our first error of the day. Mancini in the dirt. You can see a run. They're going to try to steal the third base, and he does. Sam Hall with the stolen base. That's his second of the season. Got a good jump. Saw it get on the ground. Hustling in, tries to slide away, and gets his hand in just barely. Beats that tag. Let's see it from this side. Might have caught his forearm, but they called him safe right there. And you can see Mike Gambino having a few words for our umpires, including Greg Street behind the plate. So Brewer who's 0 for 1 so far, walk and grounded out to third. But he's got Sam Hall at third. As Peter Burns has been doing quite a job in this inning, he has had to be all over the place. Clemson has two home runs in this game, but they took the lead on a fly ball that just dropped right by the Luke Gold at second. And they lead at 5-4. Strike taken, 3-1. and one. Interesting 3-0 breaking ball right there. The pitch from Mancini. Takes a strike, it's 3-2. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Sam Hall is at third for Clemson. Pitch misses. It's another walk. So there's now runners at the corners for Elijah Henderson. Henderson walked in the first, rounded to short in the second. 271, his average on the season. This inning started with that Chad Ferry single. Adam Hackenberg got hit by a pitch. Tigers have a run in, extended by the error by Gold at second base with two away.
Mancini's pitch. There's a drive over the head of Morissette at third. In for a run, will score. And they will try to stretch it for another. The throw will not be in time. It is an Elijah Henderson two-run double. And the Tigers add to the lead. Big hit right there. Boston College was on the verge of maybe getting out of that. But he hangs another pitch, belt high. And he makes no mistake and drives it right down the line. Enough to score two. You know, they called that one an air, but really, he never put a glove on it. Yeah. And it, and it, you know. So it's now a 7-4 Clemson lead. And here's Kier Meredith. You can see on the afternoon he's grounded out. Hit into that, that interference double play that we mentioned way back in the first. It's a breaking ball, but you'll see that's 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 belt high and not really where you'd like to see that if you're on the mound. There's a line shot for a base hit. Making the turn and heading for home is Henderson, and it's 8-4. Four runs in the inning for the Tigers. And that error by Gold, or at least that drop ball, has really come back to haunt him. Just a bullet, and if I'm not mistaken, is that 14 now games in a row? All 14 games. Yeah. Kier Meredith. Meredith reaching again, so 14 starts and 14 times he has been on base this season. So important for for a team to have somebody on base like that on a regular basis. So here's Briar Hawkins, who homered in the first, flew out to center, back in the third. Throw over to try to keep an eye on Meredith. He's a threat to run two for five in the stolen base department on the season. And this is a good time to try and move him to second with a steal just to go ahead and get a runner in scoring position or start with one of your hot hitters coming up the next inning. You called it. There he goes. The throw will be not in time. Stolen base. Kier Meredith. Third stolen base on the season for Kier. Just had a good jump and almost lost his foot right there, but such good balance. Was able to maintain his toe on the bag. Clemson has four in this inning. And they've got another runner in scoring position. Ground ball. This is going to be handled by Dempsey. The throw over to first, and that's the inning. But what an inning it was for the Tigers. Four runs across on three hits. We go to the fifth. It's 8-4 Clemson. New pitcher for Clemson, the right-hander Carter Raffield. This is his fourth appearance. He's pitched five innings so far in the season. No runs allowed. Given up three hits, struck out six, given up a couple walks. Teams batting 167 against him so far in 2019. So Davis Sharp's day is over. He went four innings, gave up four runs. All were earned. Six hits, four strikeouts, and one walk. Just one walk, but he was not as, as consistent as he normally is. And I, I'm sure Monty Lee would have loved to try and get him uh, five innings and a potential win. But you're in ACC play. He struggled. And that's what you really want to watch, how he looks on the mound, not just your pitches, but body mechanics. How does he? And he just n did not look comfortable like he has other starts. Raffield, a 6'4 freshman from Cochran, Georgia. 
course, did not pitch a year ago. He was recovering from Tommy John surgery, a highly touted freshman coming in, and he comes in with the Tigers having put four on the board in the bottom half of the fourth inning, and it's 8-4 Clemson as we start the fifth. And here's Brian Dempsey, the shortstop, flew out to center field, and he struck out swinging his first two times up. Pitch is taken for a ball, 1-0. Coming back from Tommy John surgery, a lot of times you'll actually pick up a little velocity if you have time to really rehab properly and, and get the strength back. And you're seeing him at 93, 95 miles an hour. So looks like velocity's there. Takes it for a strike, 2-1. Did you know Tommy at all? Um, he was ending up as I was coming through, you know, and, and so didn't really know him personally, but um, obviously got to watch him a lot. Yeah. Parker, the throw to Brewer, there's one down. Just always wondered what it would be like to have a surgery that was so unique they named the surgery after you. Yeah, and at that time they had not perfected it like they had now. He didn't have that same result, you know, at that point. But now they are seeing, um, they're so good at the way they do them, they are seeing um, very good results with the right rehab yeah, time. He, he could at least come back and, and yep. finish his career and do some nice things. But, yeah, like you said, now it's incredible. Yeah. Cody Morissette, he's one for two. He singled the last time up in the third. He's one of the outstanding shortstops in the country. Playing third base today. He had four RBI in a victory against Fairfield not too long ago. They, they had an interesting two days against Fairfield. They scored 39 runs in two days, 20 and 19, and posting a couple of wins. That'll help your numbers just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> that Boston College dugout to our left. Fouled it back. Morissette was on the All-ACC second team a year ago. It was a third-team All-American, so he started the season three for 15, and he's hit better than 500 since. That includes a hit today as... Raffield misses on the outside. Need that second pitch right here. He's been pounding the fastball pretty good. Got ahead one, two. Now he needs to hit with the second pitch. This is there, two and two. Another fastball. I'd like to see a good change or a slider right here. There is a drive, center field, Mikowski going back. He does have room, brings it down, and there's two down. Didn't fool him, but got him to hit it in the deepest part of the park for a fly out to center. So that brings up the left fielder, Joe Swazi, who's hit two fly ball outs both to Mikowski in center. Misses that pitch. Boston College had a couple of quiet innings, the first and the second, and they got rather loud in the third and fourth. Trying to extend the inning here, and Swazi will do it with a base hit that goes over the head of Sam Hall and bounces in front of Elijah Henderson in right. Just able to muscle that one. He didn't have a, a good contact on it, a little on the handle side, but had enough force to muscle it into the outfield for a base hit. So Swazi is aboard with two down. That brings up Jack Cunningham. Grounded out to third, struck out looking in his first two trips to the plate. He is a 273 hitter with 
two out. That's the situation he's in right now. Clemson led this game 4-0. Saw Boston College come all the way back to tie it before the Tigers put four more on the board in the fourth, and that's where we stand at 8-4. Swazi does have a steal on the season. There's a fly ball that is going to drop in left field. Back-to-back -back singles for BC with two out here in the fifth. Neither one of those hits with great contact. You see he just a check swing, and the force of 95 mile an hour with the force of that check swing drove it right in between the outfield and the shortstop. So now Luke Gold will come up. Of course, Gold had that fly ball that he couldn't bring in that could have ended the Clemson fourth, and the Tigers scored a run on the play and added three more before the frame was done. He grounds it to the left side, foul. Gold singled the last time up after he hit that Soft pop fly into uh, foul territory on the right side, and Dylan Brewer made a nice play to bring it in. Fouled out of play, left side. A, he, he made a great looking effort on that play. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and you're seeing that he's throwing 95 96, but he has not been able to hit with another pitch. And at this point, the hitters are not not off that, that pitch anymore. Um, if he had another pitch that he was throwing for strikes, he'd have them a little bit challenged. But right now, they're just looking dead red fastball. And he's throwing 95. They're trying to swing 96. 0-2 pitch, <laughs> called third strike, and that's the inning. So Boston College leaves two aboard in the fifth. We go to the bottom half of the inning. Clemson eight, the Eagles four. Clemson scored four runs in the bottom of the fourth. Sam Hall hit this fly ball with two out, but Luke Gold had the ball dropped in front of him. And that allowed Chad Ferry to score the go-ahead run. Paul then gets into scoring position with the stolen base as the Tigers continue the inning. Elijah Henderson with a double down the left field line. This brought in two runs. And before it was over, Kier Meredith with a single up the middle. That brought Henderson home. So after seeing a 4-0 lead disappear, the Tigers come back with four in their last inning up. And they lead it now by a count of 8-4 as James Parker will lead things off here in the bottom of the fifth. I thought we might see pitching change for Boston College as well, but they are um, letting Mancini stay out there and I think get his work in. It's going to be a long season. They want to make sure he gets what he needs to be prepared going forward. Parker takes a swing at the first pitch, and it's a fly ball out to Baldelli in center, and there is one down. At one point, I believe it was in the second inning, they had one of their relief pitchers, never picked up a number. He went out and just started stretching a little bit, and then we have seen no activity in their bullpen ever since then. So here's Chad Ferry, who is two for two. What a day he's had. He's got a solo home run and a single and another single. Three for three. He had one, he was 0 for the season coming in. Now he's three for his last three. And looking really comfortable at the plate. Uh, it's just a smooth swing. He's not over swinging, even though he's seen it real well. And just driving line drives all over the place. So that brings up Adam Hackenberg. You have to like it for, for someone like Chad Ferry. Highly touted coming out of Greenwood last year. He started 0 for 24 last year as a freshman. 
They went back to him later in May, and he was really hot, hit, uh, hit uh, 278 over his last 12 games as he was running, but the ball is fouled out of play. So you think maybe that was just a freshman thing. Then he starts this year in another struggle. But, man, he's turning around. I'm, I'm like you. He looks really, really comfortable at the play. Yeah. It, baseball's so funny. Early in the season, you can, you know, there are some guys that every year they hit 330 and they may start 150 in the big leagues. But, but doggone, end of June, they're yeah. right there at that 300 mark. Yep. Hackenberg has reached both times. He singled in the second, and he was hit by a pitch, took a shot just under his left shoulder blade. That was part of that big fourth inning for the Tigers. Pitch is inside as Burns does a little slide on his knees to bring it in. It's one and one. This is one of those days where you can just see it. The, 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 the breaking ball isn't sharp. It's not, you can't get a real good grip, it looks like, and those low humidity days with a little wind, sometimes you just cannot feel it and it just keeps slipping out. Throw over to first as they keep a cut, an eye on Ferry. That's when it's a great day to be a great changeup and fastball pitcher rather than a breaking ball pitcher. Beautiful day here at Clemson after a pretty rainy week. Right now it's sunny, 58 degrees. Long fly ball, but calling for it is Baldelli. He called off Swazi, and there's two down. So with two away, here's Bo Mikowski. He's got an RBI double in the game. Grounded into a double play in the fourth. Boston College team, I mentioned about uh, the rain we've had. They were supposed to play at South Carolina earlier this week for a midweek game on Wednesday. That game got rained out. So they made the trip to Clemson on Thursday morning and got a workout in before yesterday's game number one. Eight runs and eight hit for the, the Tigers. Four runs on eight hits for Boston College. Mancini again, another throw over the first base. Misses on that pitch, it's 1-0. and oh. Mentioned we had a good crowd here. I think it's actually gotten even better since the softball game. And that's one of the really cool things. The softball stadium is probably a football field away from where we're calling this game. Started earlier. So I'm sure there's a bunch of fans that are doing their own kind of double header today. Taking in softball and then the second game of this opening ACC series for both clubs. One-zero pitch. There's a drive. It's going to be a base hit for Mikowski. He'll hold it first. Ferry goes sliding in head first at third. The Tigers have runners at the corners with two down. Another pitch about belt high. And, uh, Tigers have been feasting on that belt high pitch throughout the day. So here's Sam Hall who will come to the plate as Peter Burns goes out to have a word with Joe Mancini and there is now activity right now in the Boston College bullpen. Yeah, this is one of those where you know as a pitcher they're just trying to buy time coming out. 
talking with you. You're a little frustrated, but you kind of know the situation. That's Michael Marzoni, number 37, a junior right-hander, taking a few tosses. So here's Sam Hall, popped out to the pitcher, and then he hit that fly ball that was the error on gold at second base that led to the huge fourth inning for the Tigers that right now has them up 8-4. to four. Here he is with runners at the corner. That is really inside. 1-0. High fastball, and it just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And, oh, have to get out of there. You can feel the breeze on that one when it gets so close. Misses on the outside, 2-0. Mikowski at first, Ferry at third. There's two away. Another high and inside, and it's 3-0. Hey, you Look at that Boston College dugout. Eagles coming into this game at five and seven. As Mancini will step off. Three of those losses were on the road at number eight, Arizona State. But Coach Gambino thought they were pretty competitive in that series, just thought they just had way too many walks, and that doomed them. They scored four runs in each of the three games, but not enough to beat the Sun Devils. The 3 0 to Sam Hall. Takes it, he walks on four pitches, and the bases are loaded for Dylan Brewer. The first baseman leading things off, top of the order for the Tigers. He's walked twice, rounded out to the second baseman in the middle of that, and as Sam Hall puts that Glove on his left hand. And again, Burns will come out, and the Tiger fans are not fan, fans of this right now. The coach over there was telling the catcher before it ever started, I want you to just kind of take your time, push around, then go out. Yeah. They just wanted just a hair more time to get ready in the bullpen. In the TV business, we call this stretching. Stretch it out. And that's what we're having here. As you can see, Mike Gambino makes his way out to talk to Mancini. And it's a full conversation at the mound. And here comes Greg Street, our head umpire. Can we mention the Boston College bullpen right now? We've got Michael Marzoni, a junior. <laughs> I think the Clemson fans are going like, hey, Blue, you're supposed to go out there and break it up. You're not supposed to join in the talk. And we are going to have a pitching change at last. Much more on that. We'll check out this new Boston College pitcher when we come back. New pitcher for Boston College is Michael Marzoni, making his seventh appearance of the season. No record, but he's got a 4.66 ERA. He's worked nine and two-thirds innings. He's allowed 11 hits, 10 strikeouts, five walks. Teams are batting 282 against him. And he comes into the ball game with his team trailing 8-4, to four, two out here in the bottom of the fifth, and Clemson has the bases loaded. One of my pet peeves as I was a 
a pitcher was the bullpen mound would be opposite the way you throw. And you think, so what? You're just throwing to a mound. It's the same distance, all that. But the wind hitting that ball is a completely different feel. And so that wind coming into your face when you're in the bullpen for Boston College will be totally reversed and be pushing from behind. And sometimes that can, that can play on you the first inning or so that you come in uh, from that situation. And uh, interested to see if it bothers him or if he's got good command of his pitches um, regardless. There's a look, as you can see, sunshine and that wind blowing in. So here's Dylan Brewer with the bases loaded. It's Hall at first, Mikowski at second, Ferry is at third. Brewer at the plate. Takes that first pitch for a ball, it's 1-0. and oh. And the pitch that affects you the most, obviously, is the breaking ball. And we've just not seen a good one today. And they warm up with throwing into it. One zero pitch to Brewer. He's taken again. Two and zero. Two zero pitch. Taking all the way, the ball gets away. Coming in to score is Ferry, and it's now 9-4, Tigers. So he gets behind 2-0, throws a changeup, and uh, just gets away from the catcher and runs scores from third, moves everybody up. So one across, runners at second and third now, and it's a 3-0 count to Dylan Brewer. Kind of an odd inning. Fly ball out, single, fly ball out, single, a walk. And now a run across. Taken all the way. Brewer's aboard with a walk, and now we're back to bases loaded again for Elijah Henderson. So a run in on the pass ball. Tigers have the bases loaded, and here's Elijah Henderson, and the last time he was up, he ripped a double. And that brought home two runs. Yeah, so if I'm a hitter, I'm just looking fastball all the way until he proves he can throw a couple non-fastball pitches for a strike. Pitches way inside, and... Burns is getting a workout there today. He's had to be in the dirt. He's had to reach high. The 1-0 from Marzoni. Call for a strike, one and one. For those at home, he's throwing about 87, 88 on his fastball. That one had a little height to it, but good enough for home plate umpire. One one pitch, ground ball left side. It's going to get through. One run is in. Two runs are in. The throw to third will not be in time. A head first slide for Elijah Henderson into second base and Clemson leads 11 to four. That was a breaking ball for a strike but did not have that sharp bite. Be able to see it right here. Breaking ball, he gets a pretty good piece of it and drives it between short and third. You can see Mikowski come in, followed by Hall. It's a three-run inning and counting for the Tigers. Here's Kier Meredith. Meredith had an RBI single in the fourth. The pitch. 
Taken for a strike. Meredith hit into a double play and grounded out to first, his first two times up. Misses, 0-2. Nice change up there. Tigers had a man aboard, excuse me, with two out in this inning. And they're still going at it with three on the board and two more guys in scoring position. Yeah, and you could see that Kier was not expecting that. He was looking fastball all the way. He was definitely out in front of it. Popped it up. Looking after it is Morissette at third. He brings it in, but Clemson breaks the gate open. Three more runs across. Five complete. It's 11-4, Tigers. I've been broadcasting baseball games here for close to 30 years, so I've seen a lot of players come through the program. Each player has got their own kind of career path. I just remember Thomas Brittle as one of the hardest workers when he played. As everybody that plays college baseball, your dreams of playing professional baseball are kind of what you're living on and hoping for. And unfortunately, those days never came for me. It's difficult because at some point, somebody's going to tell you you're not good enough anymore. Eventually, you've got to face that fact that your playing career is over. I had a friend of mine that his dad owned a car dealership, and I ended up doing that for a couple years, and last three years I've been an athletic director and a head baseball coach at a small private school. Once I got back into coaching, I wanted to get into college coaching. It seems like in the back of everybody's mind at some point they want to come back to Clemson. Found out there was an opportunity to come back to grad school here, kind of get my foot in the door somewhere and become a graduate manager here. For him to come back and be part of the staff, it was just neat to see the excitement that he had on his face to be back, help kids, and kind of give them the same opportunities that he had. We're talking about Ben Paulson, obviously he was a great representative of Clemson baseball. You kind of follow the guys that you know are taking that path to finally make it to the big leagues, which is what Ben did. And then when that's over, and you got to, again, decide what you're going to do. My fiance at the time, my wife now, was like, hey, you either go try to play baseball or you get off the couch and you have to get a real job. And uh, since Ben did not have his degree, it was a great opportunity for him to get back to Clemson, knowing that the Clemson had the Tiger Trust program funded through IPTA, that basically you can come back and finish your degree. I'm very grateful for it. It's a role I really embrace interacting with the guys every day. That's the joy of this job is we're gonna help them get better. We're gonna look after one another and it doesn't matter when you are here, it's kind of a family atmosphere. Having been a baseball player, it's nice to see those guys come back and really be part of the culture, part of the community. So much success with that Tiger Trust program here at Clemson and a lot of success right now for the Tigers on the field as they lead Boston College. It is 11 to 4 as we get things going here in the sixth inning. Carter Raffield will continue on in relief for the Tigers. We've worked two games for a couple of Saturdays. We, we've worked two one nothing games. And now we've got a game with 15 on the board so far. Yeah. <laughs> and we're only in the sixth. And this is interesting now. Raffield you know, coming off Tommy John and having that long of an inning rest, that is hard. That is really difficult and um, hoping nothing detrimental happens here. Ground ball by Jimenez to third. Nice throw by Hawkins, and there's one down. Good job to come right out there and get ahead, get an out quick. Get a little of that pressure off. Back in your groove and nice little play on the ground ball. Nice look there at Briar Hawkins at third base. That brings up Peter Burns. Burns is having a big day. He's got a home run, a solo shot in the third. Hit an RBI triple in the fourth. And again, he came into the day batting 160. He's now up to 222. Still relatively early in the season, so a couple hits can make a big difference. But nevertheless, he's had a breakout. Pitch taken for a strike, one and two. 
Raphael right at 93 miles an hour, so he's still pumping it hard and throwing strikes. Fly ball, it's gonna be out of play. It'll remain one and two. Misses, two and two. Dante Baldelli, number nine hitter, the center fielder is up next. Fouled it back, it'll stay two and two. Clemson now has not only double figure runs, they got double figure hits, 11 runs on 10 hits. Four runs off eight hits for the Eagles. We're gonna go full here, count it three and two. And Raphael walks him. Pretty much all fastballs, which is neither good nor bad. I do want to try and bring that down in the strike zone a little bit. So here is Badelli. He's got a bunt single in the third, struck out swinging in the fourth. Raffield has now allowed three base runners. He gave up a couple of singles in the fifth. But BC couldn't get them home. And now a one-out walk here in the sixth. Baldelli at 234 on the season. Burns has not attempted a steal in the season as they made the throw over to first. Right down the middle, one and one. Best breaking ball he's thrown all day and only out of two or three of them, just right there down on the knee area. Popped it up. Raphael will call for it himself, and he makes the play. There's two down. That little curveball right before there made that 93 a whole lot faster, and he just could not get around on it. Raphael called everybody off. It brings up Sal Frelick, top of the order. 0 for 2, walked the first time up, stole a base. Caught the corner. Makes the inside part of the plate, 0-1. Foul ball, left side, 0-2. Raphael just overpowering right now, really. When he's in the strike zone, they are not taking a good swing right now. Right now he's at 33 pitches. Came in relief of Davis Sharp. Fly ball, center field, Mikowski. Backs off, stops, pulls it in, and nothing doing. A man left aboard in the top of the six, but nothing across. We go to the bottom of the inning. Clumps it up, 11-4. Freshman Evan Moore is the third pitcher of the game for Boston College. Just his second appearance. He's pitched one inning so far. A couple of strikeouts and a walk. And he comes in with... His team trailing 11 to four in the bottom of the sixth inning and the four, five and six hitters are due up for Clemson. Good time for <clears throat> Coach Gambino to see a nice young arm out there. 
wants to see him throw strikes and attack hitters, show poise. And leading things off for the Tigers, here's Briar Hawkins. Got the scoring underway for Clemson with a home run in the first inning that brought in a couple of runs. Flew out to center field and grounded out to the shortstop his other two times up today. That home run was the first of the season for Hawkins. His average right now at 265. Moore's first pitch. Taken for a strike. Eighty-nine mile an hour fastball to start with. Another strike very quickly down 0 and 2. Here's a good look at the freshman. Check swing at it. The appeal to third. It'll be one and two. That breaking ball had real good bite just off the plate by about eight inches. So what could have been a strikeout, just able to hold off of the swing. One-two pitch. Fouled it out of play. It'll stay one and two. Clemson with their by far biggest offensive day of the season so far with 11 runs on the board here as we see the Tigers batting in the sixth inning. Previous high was a week ago. Correction, a week ago Friday night when they put seven on the board at South Carolina. Swing and a miss, drop third strike, but the throw will be made, and there's the first out of the inning. Most runs the Tigers have scored here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium so far this year, six in the series finale against Liberty. Best breaking ball we've seen so far, in my view, from Evan Moore here. So that brings up James Parker. He's got a couple of fly ball outs, part of an 0 for 3 day. There's a shot that's going to go before a base hit. Past Morissette. Makes the turn at first, but he'll pull back for the single. 12th hit of the day for the Tigers. Looking fastball, got a fastball. And hot shot to third base. Too much to handle. So that brings up Chad Ferry, who right now that baseball must look like a beach ball. He's three for three on the day. His first three hits of the season, couple of singles and a solo home run. Takes first pitch for a ball. Throw over to first to keep an eye on James Parker. He's two for two in the stolen base category on the year. Adam Hackenberg is on deck. In the dirt, but not far enough away to allow Parker to advance. Definitely giving a lot of respect to Ferry. Start him off with a breaking ball, then a change up. Now he finds himself 2-0, and he's, he's got to come in eventually. Came inside that time, and he got the called strike, 2-1. and one. Good location. You say, why didn't he swing? That was a fastball. Well, Monty Lee, you'll hear him call out one pitch, one spot, and he's look, he was looking a little more middle of the plate, so he just let that one go. Fouled it off to the left side. Hopefully today is the, again, the breakout day for Chad Ferry. We mentioned uh, 
not only his struggles this year, but his freshman year, he didn't get his first hit until May. Well, he made it all the way to today, was it? March 7th. And he's got three. Pops that up left side, but it's going to go foul into the BC bullpen. Two balls and two strikes, the count now. Evan Moore taking his time. Now a throw over to first. The 2-2. Swing and a miss, although a dropped third strike. Wild pitch will allow the runner to get the second. Good bite, breaking ball. First one they've really seen all day. With two strikes, could not lay off it. That brings up Adam Hackenberg. He's got one hit on the day, three in the series. He knocked in a couple of runs yesterday, including the game winner in the bottom of the eighth. Takes a big cut. Parker at second. Hackenberg on the season hitting 364 with runners in scoring position and 300 overall. Good eye. Lays off of that one, one and one. Same two teams tomorrow. It's a 1 o'clock start. Spencer Strider will be the starter for the Tigers, and Emmett Sheehan will go for Boston College. Hackenberg misses. One and two. Fastball on the outside corner. Moore, the freshman, again in his second appearance. Pitches outside, lays off at two and two. Mikowski is on deck for Clemson. Ground ball, there's nobody there. The shift was not in the right spot that time. There was nobody there for that ground ball. Parker across the plate, 12-4 Clemson. Well, that's where you had the shift on. But if you look at that pitch location, it's just opposite. He pitched him away. And that's exactly where he took it, right to that opening on the right side of the infield. Not hard hit. So Hackenberg with his first RBI of the day to go along with his second hit. He's at first, and with two away, here's Bo Mikowski. Bo's got a couple of base hits today, a RBI double in the second. He singled the last time up in the fifth. Ground ball, another base hit. Hackenberg will hold it second. Mikowski with his third hit. And there's two aboard. If there's one thing that Monty Lee can take away from today is that he put two guys in the lineup in Ferry and Mikowski. One was hitless on the season. One was batting 0-5-0. Well, Ferry's got three hits and a home run. And Mikowski's got three hits and an RBI. 
Yeah, and one of those reasons why he keeps playing players early in the season, anything could be going on. There's a lot of a lot of things going on. you got to get players. You know the talent. They came with talent. So how do we get them going? How do we get them comfortable? This was one of those days where everything fell in place. Sam walked the first time, or last time up, I should say. Popped out to the pitcher and reached on an error. Takes that pitch for a strike. It's 0-2. Clemson has now scored a run in every inning, at least one run, except for the third. Mikowski at first, Hackenberg at second. Pitches in the dirt, but once again, Burns does a nice job, and now they've got the runner trapped. That is Hackenberg, and he's going to get nailed for the third out of the inning. So I know a disappointment there for Clemson, but the Tigers get another run. Six completed, Doug Kingsmore Stadium. It's 12-4 Clemson. Top of the seventh inning, Clemson on top of Boston College, 12-4, to a productive day for the Clemson offense. Those 12 runs, a season high, the previous high, seven at South Carolina. And with 13 hits, that's now a season high. The previous best, 12 hits and a victory against Liberty. You know, and a lot of times you get 13, 14 hits, you get a lot of little bloopers, little infield. They've been mostly shots today. There's not been many that have just been eked into the in for a base hit. I got to agree with you. Yeah, they've they have hit some shots and well placed. They got one on the shift the last time up. They got a couple of home runs and Clemson's bats beginning to perhaps wake up a little bit here in the early stages of March. Of course, the one that was probably most painful and hurtful was a little blooper. Yeah, right. That fell in in front of the infielder. Yeah, fell in right in front of uh, gold at second base and it extended an inning actually knocked a run in and extended that uh, four run fourth for the Tigers this is Brian Dempsey the shortstop against Raffield who is in his third inning of work Dempsey is 0 for 3 on the day he's got a strikeout there's a ground ball he's got his first base hit of the afternoon it goes right up the middle and the leadoff man is aboard for Boston College. And that's exactly what you want to do with a guy throwing hard. You don't try and pull him. You just try and hit it right back at him. And uh, that's exactly what he does right there. Third time today that BC has been able to get the leadoff man aboard. So here's Cody Morissette, the third baseman. He's got one hit on the day, a couple fly ball outs. And again, he has been, in his career, very productive against Clemson. But right now, Boston College needs a lot of production as they trail by eight. The 1-0 pitch popped to the back out of play. Power versus power here, Raph. Raphael just keeps on coming. I mean, he's throwing 92, 93, 94, 95. Not, not really mixing it up on any other pitches. He's thrown a couple breaking balls, but not many. He may need to do that, this getting into that second time seeing him. Strike called, one and two. This is right now laying out the way that Monty Lee would like to see it go every ball game just from the standpoint of having a lead and now you're in the seventh inning can get into his bullpen which he has tremendous confidence in and obviously they've responded throughout the season better still is to have an eight run lead mm -hmm. the day after your your closer Carson Spires went more than an inning so you weren't going to be using him today anyway Two 
2-2 pitch. There is a fly ball that's going to send back, and it's going to go short of the wall. Chad Ferry will play it off the bounce. It's going to be a stand-up double for Morissette. Now all of a sudden, Boston College has runners at second and third. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh. And this is what I was talking about. Getting that second time round, hitters are just too good. If you've, They've seen you now, you know, three innings, throw nothing but fastballs. So they're kind of saying, if you throw a curveball, you have me. You got me. But I am going to be ready for the fastball. And so the good hitters are starting to make that contact now. And unless you just get in a great location, you've got to tra- start changing it up a little bit. Here's Joe Swazi, the left fielder. Ground ball. It'll be handled by Parker. Parker makes the throw. The run does score on the play. That is uh, Dempsey coming in. So run, one run across, but they get the second out. And this is the time of game that you're willing to exchange an out for one little run there. You expect to try and maybe push some more runs across, and you don't want any big innings. So a run across, one out. Still have a runner at second base in Morissette. And here's Jack Cunningham, the first baseman, who singled the last time up. Fouled it out of play. He's another productive hitter. Still batting over 400 on the season. He's 455 hitter with runners in scoring position. That's what they got right now. Raffield misses on the outside. Carter in his third inning of work is giving up one earned run now. He's got one strikeout and one walk and four hits allowed. Popped it up. Calling off uh, James, or calling off Ryer Hawkins is James Parker, and Parker makes the grab. And there's two down. Good poise by Redfield, coming right back at him, just keeps challenging him. The one equalizer is you throw that high fastball when they're geared up for it, just out of the strike zone, hard to get to. And with Luke Gold coming up, we're going to have a pitching change for the Tigers. So Raffield's day is done. We'll check out the new Tiger pitcher when we come back. Third pitcher of the day for the Tigers is Nick Hoffman. He is a right-hander, a freshman from Centerville, Ohio. His record on the season is 1-1. One and one. His ERA of 2.70. This will be his fifth appearance. He's pitched six and two-thirds inning. He's allowed two runs on seven hits. He's got seven strikeouts, no walks. Teams are batting 250 against him. He made his debut and got the win in relief against Furman. He went three innings against the Paladins. Three scoreless innings, I should say. I believe that game was uh, played at uh, the ballpark in Greenville. Mm -hmm. Floor Field. (coughs) This is a good move by Monty Lee. Get your reliever in there. Already two outs. Even though there's a guy on, you know, not a tremendous amount of pressure. Got a guy who throws a lot of strikes. Obviously, seven strikeouts, no walks. He can get a little feel for it, get out of this inning, maybe take you the next two. So good idea by Coach Lee right there. He'll face Luke Gold, the Boston College second baseman. He's got a single and scored a run. That was back in the fourth. He struck out looking the last time up. Morissette is at second. The first pitch from Hoffman is a called strike. Comes right in there, 88 mile an hour fastball, right on the corner. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. That pitch had a little hop to it as you see it kind of got right by him. Two pitches and two strikes so far for Hoffman. 
missed low, one and two. Swing and a miss. It is a four pitch relief appearance for Hoffman. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Clemson leads Boston College. It is 12 5. If you're a baseball fan who hates the shift, you'll like this because here's a couple of times where Boston College had the shift on and it didn't work. Adam Hackenberg knocked that one through the empty right side, and then coming up a little bit later, that was Bo Mikowski as the Tigers. Right now cruising at a 12-5 lead and Sam Hall leading things off here for Clemson in the bottom of the seventh. You might recall Hall was at the plate to end the sixth when uh, the base runner got caught stealing. Sam on the day, 0 for 2 with a walk. Gets foul ball there. You know, if you were a Clemson player or a fan, you might have said, oh, what are the runners doing? They got caught in between. But you look at what that catcher did on that ball to block it. Yeah. Those runners thought, sure, that one was going to the backstop. Yeah. Ball and a strike. Evan Moore, the freshman, in relief. Misses outside. It's 2-1. and one. Fly ball, driving Swazi back, but now he's got to come in. Looks like he misjudged it for a moment, but brings it in, and it's the first out of the inning. Let's go, bro. Get on the back. It's interesting. He all game that ball's been carrying, but that wind was coming straight from left that time, and it actually pushed it in. And he wasn't he wasn't ready for that. He thought it was yeah. going to be pushed, and it, it got drawn in instead of pushed back. Yeah, this game is at the two and a half hour mark, and that's been the way it's been all day long. And then suddenly, a little bit of a surprise as Dylan Brewer comes up. Brewer's walked three times in this game. In that leadoff spot today. Pitch misses. It's 2 and 0. Just as effective as three hit game. So your leadoff hitter gets on. Oh, Popped it out of play. He's had a pretty good series when you think about it. He's only got the one hit, but he was one for two yesterday, scored a run. And again, he's reached three times today. Yeah. So he's been productive. Yeah. Give me hitters on, it puts pressure on the pitcher and on the defense. Strike taken two and two. Dylan was highly, highly touted coming out of high school, was drafted in the 32nd round by the Giants, but here he is at Clemson. If you read perfect game, they consider him to be a top 10 college prospect for the 2022 draft. I don't even want to think about that far yeah, in the future. Right. As you can see, nice build. He's going to fill out. Got a nice swing. And one's in the dirt. That'll make it three and two. You know, here, Coach Lee, he wants to see, don't get sloppy on me because we're up. Keep, keep good approaches at the plate. Give me good at-bats. He'll take time. I imagine one of the things he's probably saying down there, because he talks about it a lot, he talks about winning the last nine outs. And that's where we're in right now. There's a drive. Right center field, 
It's back, back, and all the way just short of the fence is Baldelli to bring it in. And there's two down. Pretty good swing right there, and that carried a good distance. If he could have just pulled it just a hair more, he had a home run. So two down, and here's Elijah Henderson. Elijah's had a day. He's knocked in four of Clemson's 12 runs. He's had doubles each of the last two times up. A correction, a double and a single. Strike called. Take it for a ball, one and one. He has been Mr. Versatility for Clemson this year. They've played him in second, they've played him in right, they've played him in left. He's in right field today. Pierre Meredith is on plate, on, on deck, I should say. Now is it back? A ball and two strikes. Nice timing, by the way, by the press box music choice to play staying alive here with him fouling off to stay up. Grounds it. Going to be fielded by Morissette. The long throw is not in time. An infield single for Elijah Henderson. Morissette had to make a decision. Am I going to get the short hop or a high hop? He chose the high hop. And by that time, it went back just a stair, got the high. Then no time to get it over to first base. So Henderson is aboard with two out, as you can see. Beat that by a couple of steps. And here's Kier Meredith. Kier's got an RBI single in the game. Also got a steal. His average right at 423 on the season. Ball is in the dirt. That's going to let Henderson, the wild pitch, will get to second. And now he's in scoring position with two outs. Peter Burns has worked hard to, he's done a lot of good back there stopping uh, a lot of Aaron pitches, but that one just, that was just one too many that, that time. Yeah, it looked like that caught him on the wrist forearm too, and he's shaking that off pretty good. Umpire decided to wipe the plate for him, give him just a little more time. As we mentioned, Meredith is the ACC Player of the Week this week after his performances against East Tennessee and South Carolina. There's a drive, right field, not going to be deep enough. Freilich is there, and he will bring it in. Seven complete at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clemson on top of Boston College. It's 12-5. Clemson Tigers, this is the week ahead for them. Obviously, we have our conclusion of the series tomorrow afternoon, Boston College. That's a 1 o'clock start. And a reminder for everyone, daylight saving time, which means we change our clocks at 2 this morning. So turn them forward an hour so you don't miss that one. And as always, we always advise you, at the same time, turn your scales back 10 pounds. <laughs> Swing and a miss to get things started here in the eighth inning. That's Ramon Jimenez. He's got a hit on the afternoon. Saw they got a couple of midweek games coming up, Presbyterian and Winthrop, before their first real true road series of the season. It'll be at Wake Forest next weekend. <laughs> Tigers did play one game at South Carolina, then played the second game on the neutral field in Columbia. Clemson fans can di dispute the term neutral if you'd like as the fly yeah. ball is going to be handled by Henderson and Jimenez is one out. 
As far as Boston College goes, they've got the game obviously here tomorrow, which will close things out, but their road trips continue. They'll be at Holy Cross on Tuesday. Then they're at NC State next weekend. You'll see that series here on ACC Network Extra. A trip to Northeastern. That trip for Northeastern is huge because the next day they finally play their home opener on March 18th against Siena. And this five weeks of going around the country, although that's one of the things that Mike Gambino says that they talk about in recruiting. It's one of the things they sell. Yeah. Nice to see different places. Nice to play against other teams, especially usually early. You're playing a lot of good teams. Yeah. And that's what that kids want to do that, man. I want to compete. Yeah. I want to see. Absolutely. Peter Burns. He's had a big day. He's got that home run. He's got an RBI triple. He walked the last time up. As Hoffman's pitch gets away. Hoffman in his second inning of work. You might recall he came in for Carter Raffield to end the seventh. He had a four-pitch strikeout. There's a fly ball. Mikowski will come a long way in, bring it down. Tried to make the fancy toss right back there. At least he got the catch. That's the most important thing. There's two down. Yeah, if umpire wanted to be a little tough on him, I, I was gonna, give that, you know, yeah. it was pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's a 5-5 five, five game, maybe it might be, uh -huh. who knows. Uh -huh. Our fine producer just suggesting whether or not that would be a catch in college football, and that's what is a catch in football anymore? <laughs> not anywhere near the end zone. Yeah. Valdelli has a bunt single for his only hit of the day. He hits a fly ball that time that's going to go off the wonderful Clemson ex baseball executive building over there to the right. We have not spoken much of just what a great job Hoffman's done since he's come in. He is just throwing really good pitches, good strikes, mixing it up, and really ahead of these hitters regularly and, and really dominating right now. Throwing with some velocity, one and two the count. Couldn't get that one, he's two and two. He's got a strikeout so far. Swing and a miss, that'll end the inning. Second time he's ended an inning with a strikeout. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Clemson has a seven-run lead on Boston College. It's 12-5. New pitcher for Boston College is John Campbell, Jr. He is a right-hander making his fifth appearance of the season. He's got a one-and-one -one record, a 4.15 ERA. He's worked four and a third. He's allowed a couple of earned runs on six hits. He's got two strikeouts and a walk. Teams hitting 333 against him so far in the season. Hawkins, Parker, and Ferry do up for the Tigers here in the bottom of the eighth. I think you got to give a lot of credit to what Monty Lee's pitching staff has done. Once again, I, who knows how long they'll keep these numbers going, but they've just been incredible. Teams coming into this weekend series batting just 200 against Clemson. Yeah, I, I think every time I've seen them, they've generally around the strike zone, making big pitches when it really matters. They've, they've had runners on base, but making the big pitch, trying to get out of those big, big innings, had a couple, um, you know, one inning today that was bigger than I think they'd have liked, but for the most part, finding ways to make the pitch when it counts. Briar Hawkins. Had a home run back in the first inning. It was a two-run shot. One for four on the day. Boston College coming into the game averaging right at seven and a half runs per game. They've got seven runs in the series total so far against Clemson pitching. Check that, they got eight runs. 
Pitch misses on the outside. It's a good look at John Campbell, Jr. Check swing and missed one and two. Big time curveball right there. Unexpected. And he just could not lay off that. He thought fastball all the way. That one is in the dirt. Two and two. Again, just can't seem to find that consistency on the Boston College side. Good pitch, bad pitch, good pitch, bad pitch. And depending on what that situation is, has led to some big hits and, and scattered runs. Ground ball, but it's going to be a Dempsey. That's short. He makes the throw over. One away here in the eighth. As much as we've talked about the Boston College offense, their pitching staff coming into the weekend, Team ERA 5.44. Team's hitting 274 against them. That's actually through yesterday's game. Yeah, and I think you could probably attribute a lot of that to the walks. Uh, you know, Leo Mazzoni used to pound pound us about every walk is. You, at the end of the year, if you look at your uh, walks per game, mm -hmm. it'll be about the, what your ERA per game is. Well, he absolutely knew what he was talking about. He did. <laughs> and the record to prove it. James Parker singled in the sixth, his one hit of the day. James at 289. Takes that one inside. Real good fastball inside corner. Ball and two strikes. Laid off that one and got the ball call, two and two. Chad Ferry's on deck for the Tigers. Here's Campbell's pitch. Fly ball. Left field. It's deep. It's at the wall. He brings it in. Terrific play by Swazi. Yeah, it's going to go down as a fly ball to the left fielder. But, man, he gave that a ride. But a nice job by that left fielder for the Eagles. He hit that really good. If you notice, the wind is totally gone at this point. Did not help at all. If he had just any wind. That ball's a home run. Yeah. So with two down, here is Chad Ferry. Three hits on the day. A couple of singles and that home run. Back in the second. Boston College does have the top of the order coming up in the ninth. Chad didn't like that call from Greg Street. It was a pretty good pitch, especially when you're late in the game up a bunch of runs. They're going to probably call that more times than not. Yeah. No balls and two strikes. This is outside, one and two. So Campbell, after getting up quickly, 0 oh and 2. Now the count's even at 2 and 2. Misses that time, and now it's going to be a full count at three and two. Very 
you're doing some footwork to get out of the way. Threw two perfect ones and three just all over the places. Just, the inconsistency, just yeah. yeah. Fly ball, center field, calling for it is Baldelli. And he makes the grab, and the side is retired. We're going to the ninth. Clemson up by seven on Boston College. Well, Clemson got some power going in this one. They got the first inning home run from Hawkins, a second inning home run from Ferry. They jumped out to a 4-0 lead, only to see BC come back and tie the game at the fourth. The big inning was the bottom of the fourth when Clemson scored four runs that really came in when the second baseman, Gold, could not get to, should have had, what would have been the third out of the inning. And instead, it opened the door for not only did that bring in the go-ahead run, but three more on top of that. And it's been all Tigers ever since. I think you're exactly right. I think that was the killer on uh, BC at that point. It took all the wind out of the pitcher and seemed to take it out of the hitters. And then on top of that, Raffield came in, did a really nice job. Hoffman's come in, done a really nice job, and uh, kind of put the ice on. Sal Fralick, the leadoff man, pops it up. Left fielder coming in. Chad Ferry makes the grab, and there's one down. We'll bring up Brian Dempsey. Dempsey had a leadoff single to center field in the seventh. It's his one hit of the day. 362 is average. He's got a strikeout in there. But we have been impressed by Nick Hoffman, who has come in in relief. He's an inning and two-thirds so far. He's got a couple of strikeouts. There's a fly ball that's going to make it, chasing after it and hauling it in nicely. Nice work by Elijah Henderson. That could have been trouble, but Henderson is able to run it down, and Hoffman is an out away from a hitless relief appearance. Yeah, that one had... Potential double all over it, but boy, just stayed at it. Henderson took it right into the corner, kept his eyes focused, and made a great play. So with two out in the ninth, it's up to Cody Morissette, and that's saying a lot when you're down by seven runs. He singled, actually doubled the last time up in the seventh. Fouls away the first pitch. He's got a couple of hits on the day. I'm interested to see how he does in this matchup. Hoffman's been right on target. Morissette's been on target. See who comes out the winner on this one. Takes a strike. 0-2. Clemson fans up on their feet now. Hoffman's 0-2 pitch. Misses 1-2. and two. Tell you more two strikes. Morissette does not chase pitches. He hangs in there. There's a line shot. It's going to be a base hit past the outreach of Sam Hall. So Morissette gets his third hit of the day, and that'll extend the Boston College ninth. He loves to hit against Clemson. That was just impressive. I mean, that was not a, not a perfect pitch, but, man, for what Hoffman's been doing on everybody, for him to get that kind of swing yeah. on it, two strikes, pretty impressive. First hit allowed by Hoffman, first base runner. That brings up Joe Swazi, the left fielder, who is one for four on the day. Hoffman's pitch, ball one, one and oh. Called strike, one and one. Swazi. Brown ball. Coming up with it is Hawkins. The throw to first. It is not in time. So Swazi shows some hustle, gets down to first base, and with two out, back to back hits for the Eagles. Not a powerful hit, but perfectly yeah. placed. 
and just could not get it in time to get a throw to beat him. So Jack Cunningham now up. As Boston College has managed a couple of hits here after the first two outs of the inning. Cunningham has a single on the day. Takes a called strike. Boston College up to a dozen hits now, as you can see. It. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. Real good change up right there. Hoffman's pitch. First ball, ball and two strikes. Hoffman going right to work. The one, two. Pitch gets away. Two and two. I'm not sure, but I think if he catches that, that's a strike. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. That just shows you the catcher was expecting that out outside. It just cut across inside. Two balls and two strikes. Brown ball to the right side. Brewer will handle it himself, and this game and this series belongs to the Clemson Tigers. They knock off Boston College by a final score of 12 to 5, a 14 hit effort for Clemson. A season high in runs and hits for the Tigers, and they take the first two games of the series, heading into the capper coming up tomorrow. So, to me, Davis was not sharp today, but he he bulldogged it. He started, tried to stay out there, gave him a few innings, got him to where they could get to that, what you had talked about, that bullpen, and they came in and did the job. The Tigers get the victory by a final count of 12-5. Save two games teams tomorrow, I should say, right here on ACC Network Extra. That's going to be a 1 o'clock start. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Marty Clary and our entire crew, this is Fred Cunningham saying goodbye from Doug Kingsmore Stadium as Clemson beats Boston College by a final of 12 to 5. Have a great evening, everyone.